Good morning to everybody. Uh, today our topic is that single stage amplifier. I think uh, all of you know that what is single stage amplifier, uh, how it works, all those things. Uh, actually, this is the most basic, um, I can say ultra basic kind of thing of our analog design. Uh, actually, nobody uses this single stage amplifier standalone, but it serves or it gives you some um, basic or intuition how to design a complicated or complex circuit, how to um, how to intuitively how to predict the behavior of the circuits. So uh, that today that we are going to discuss on these things. Actually this this is the amplifier, I mean this guy is using the amplifier, uh, this is actually a power amplifier to amplify his rock or whatever rock, jazz, whatever it may be. And uh, single stage amplifier by, uh, by this term we means that uh, we have only one active device which amplifies the signal. We may have other devices which uh, which can act as a load to that active device, but only uh, but a particular one device only that will amplify the signal. Signal amplification is done by only one active device. This is a transistor. You can see this is a one transistor. All these are uh, these are loads, biasing resistors, all those things. These are the connections in taking inputs and uh, I mean taking the output, giving the input to this amplifier. Uh, there are actually. Um, Different types of amplifier are there, voltage amplifier, current amplifier, transconductance, trans resistance, power amplifier, all those things. Actually the topology may vary depending on the our uh, output quantity and the input quantity. Uh, when the output is voltage and the input is also a voltage, this is known as a voltage amplifier and similarly like this, output is current, both the input and output are current. Here yeah, the output is current and the input is voltage and for the, uh, for this this amplifier, power amplifier, we have the input is also a power quantity and the output is also a power. We are interested in amplifying the power here. But in today's uh, class, I will take mainly this thing also only, voltage amplifier. There are some prerequisites of this uh, single stage voltage amplifier. There are different biasing schemes to bias that uh, transistor in the saturation level. I think all of you must be having some idea of uh, regarding these three basic three basic biasing schemes. And uh, actually, we can bias the transistor. The in there are actually two methods to biasing the transistor. One is that we we can design a separate biasing circuit for the transistor for an active device, or we can have that uh, that input itself contains the biasing signal. I mean that uh, our input will be. Uh, the AC input signal will be riding on some DC. Okay, instead of giving pure AC to the transistor, we are giving an AC that is already superposed with some DC. So that will be our signal, and that DC will bias the transistor. So for for the second method, we don't need this bias, uh, separate biasing circuits. Is that clear? I think uh, suppose if this is the simplest kind of uh, your single stage amplifier. We can have this uh, separate biasing scheme and give our pure AC signal like that and taking the output, output load is there, okay. This may be a case or we can use this one also. No biasing uh, network is there but our signal is this one. This is the VGS Q or VGQ, this DC level. So normally in analog circuit design, we, uh, we normally we do not design this separate biasing network. Uh, but important is that normally, there are certain cases we have to design this biasing network also because we don't have this AC riding on the DC signal. So then uh, the only thing is that uh, we, can we, can, uh, we can design these biasing circuits and use our amplifier. And the second most important thing is the MOS signal, small signal model. Uh, you know that there are small signal models. Well, first let me draw that uh, small signal, then I will explain this thing. All of you, I think, are aware of that uh, all the MOSs and transistors, not transistors, MOSs are basically four terminal devices. This is the gate, drain, source, and the body. Okay, body means uh, 
if we have this uh, wafer of p type wafer and we are making this n plus zone here this is our gate source drain this is the body okay and normally what we do that we generally short this body to source this is the normal practice but there are some cases we cannot do this thing for that uh, for those cases normally body is uh, grounded we cannot uh, short this thing so this there there won't be any connection normally the body is grounded but source is not grounded there will be some po uh, positive voltages to the source so the body uh, source and body this junction is re reverse biased or maybe forward biased in some cases this this one this junction and you also may be aware of that uh, vt the most important parameter of a mos threshold voltage is a function of this reverse bias how, how much we are reverse biasing this junction source body source junction vth depends on that that quantity normally that uh, if the reverse bias is increases we sv i should write because s is positive we have to reverse bias means we have to give positive voltage here negative here so vsv is increasing along this direction normally threshold voltage increases with this quantity so more we are reverse biasing the this junction the more the threshold voltage now if we forward bias this thing this one this junction then the threshold voltage will be decreasing so we have four terminals and this is our signal we have we have grounded this body and give us by a source i mean we have given some dc it's minus plus call it vb so we are reverse biasing the source and the body this is our uh, quantity of prime interest gm call it vgs this voltage between these two voltage vgs so this is gm vgs the current this will be gmb vb i am saying that if you are reverse biasing this thing okay or uh, rather if you are forward biasing this source body junction your vth increases decreases so as vth decreases our current will increase in the saturation domain because in the saturation domain current is proportional to vgs minus vth so if this quantity decreases it has to increase so the direction of this thing this current source will be in in this direction gmb vb and this is the output resistance of the mos and this output resistance can be expressed as lambda versus id this id is the biasing current flowing through this net uh, drain this id and lambda is the this uh, drain length modulation or like that something is called for lambda so r0 is 1 by lambda into id so this is our complete model for cmos i mean not cmos nmos or pmos whatever it may be we will be using uh, again and again this model in future and third and the second most important things that uh, normally in uh, in our processes uh, the what are the process we have uh, cmos cmos 9 or jazz all these process have a single well process single well means uh, I, i think you, you may be aware of that uh, what are the basic processing steps this is the wafer suppose this is the wafer this is a p type wafer call it uh, p type and uh, if we want to make cmos both nmos and pmos on this substrate we have to make this n well for nmos and but we can directly uh, sorry n well for pmos and but we can directly fabricate nmos over here we don't need any separate well this is uh, p plus p plus p plus n plus and this is our body contact for nmos this is the body contact for sorry uh, body for pmos and body for nmos
okay and suppose we have a structure like this we have a circuit like this this is the pmos we are taking output from here this is the nmos call it vb1 and this is our input this to our nmos this is the pmos there are fourth uh, fourth terminal also floating i have not connected yet for the pmos you see that there are separate well for each of the pmos so we can short this call it uh, drain source so you can short this source base uh, source body actually shorting this source and body we are we are we are basically reducing that body effect so uh, now this source junction and the body junction is is in equilibrium so the body effect will be zero so the vth will uh, v, so the value of the vth will be only that uh, that vth zero vth actually vth zero plus body factor and some correction is there some expression is there so vth zero is the equilibrium uh, threshold voltage that is easy to measure and those things so we always try to minimize this body factor because depending if some body effect is there actually if some voltage is there then depending on the voltage this vth of the transistor will change and that may and in in most of our designs we we, we normally assumes that vth of all the transistors are same but so uh, here uh, we always try to reduce the body effect or whenever we have a chance we, we just short this source to source to body so uh, so the so the thing for pmos is fine we can we can always uh, short this these two terminals because each of the pmos have their own nwell but for nmos things are little bit complicated nmos they they do not have uh, their own well they are all situated in a single uh, common ground or common uh, substrate so if you general, uh, so if you suppose one more nmos is there this is its body this is source drain call it source drain now if you short these two and these two for nmos you are basically shorting the source of this transistor this to separate nmos and shorting the source of nmos i mean you are destroying your designs it it will not work so you cannot short this thing for nmos so you have to connect body to ground specifically body to ground for nmos only this ground so this body you have to ground this you can short connect here now see uh, this nmos is suffering from severe body bias effect because the source is not grounded is this source is connected to the drain of this transistor where the body is grounded okay so uh, this uh, this source body junction is reverse biased but this is not suffering from any uh, body effect and also pmos so this is a scenario for p well p well process sorry not p well n well process because we are having a separate n well in a p type ap layer here and the scenario will be just opposite if we have the uh, p well within a n well ap layer then we have a separate uh, p well for n mosses so we can short them the uh, body and source of those uh, n mosses but we have uh, but we we cannot short body and source for pmos there and if you have the twin well process we can short each of the body and uh, this thing but the twin well process is uh, co costly uh, most uh, costlier than, uh, than the single well process and i think most of the process we have cmos cmos 90 jazz umc also is single stress uh, single uh, single well process this one so is that clear this body effect of body bias and any question from this thing So uh, this is over. This uh, body effect, these things are over. So let us start with some new. Okay, uh, as as you may be aware of, there are basically three common, uh, three most basic topology. One is the common gate, the common drain, and uh, the third is the common source. Common gate is that uh, you are uh, we are we are making. we are making our gate terminal common for between input and output 
so this is our common gate situation okay and small signal uh, equivalent circuit for this thing is going to be like this we have uh, previously we are having this one This is V in, call it VB. Now we are applying input here in the, uh, in the, I mean, this is the source, drain and gate. So uh, we have to draw this from source to gate. We have to go. Uh, so we are making this gate console, common, this one. Put the source terminal here, drain terminal there. So now see that uh, this is source drain. For uh, if we are going from source to drain, we are facing these two current source and this resistance. And this RD will be coming here. And our input is sitting here. And uh, this is your R0, this is GM V in, this is GM V in, because here the both the body bias and the input are same. Substrate is grounded here. So the body bias and input are same. So this will be both GM V in and GM V in. So this is our um, what called common gate topology. And similarly, we can have this common source, uh, common drain also. And we are taking output from here. Similarly, you can draw the small signal equivalent circuit for this one also. I think those things we, we, uh, you know. Uh, actually, whatever uh, what thing you may be uh, not knowing that this effect of this GMB, this is, I think, new to you, that uh, body effect or body biasing, this thing. So the com uh, small signal equivalent circuit for this thing will be is GMVGS and we are taking output from here so this will be GMV V0 we are assuming this is positive this is negative and this is V in actually this is uh, this have to be minus GMV because uh, this this model is valid when uh, this is negative this is positive but here this becomes positive this is negative so this is this have to be minus of GMV GM, GMB V0. So these are the small signal models for your, uh, this is for CD, this is for CG. Okay. Now, uh, well, the one thing remains that is the CS. CS is the, the I will be discussing most of the things uh, regarding this CS. CS stage with passive load. CS means the common source. So uh, this is our little nice circuit. P in body. This is RL. This is the uh, CL stage using passive load. Actually, I will detail. Uh, I will discuss this circuit a little bit detail because uh, there are some important issues or concepts regarding uh, this designing of single stage amplifier. The equivalent circuit uh, for this thing is will be like this.
Now here uh, as you see that uh, both the source and uh, body both are grounded. So uh, your this VB is 0 here. So this current source won't be, won't be there. Only that GM into V in will be there. And this is our uh, equivalent circuit for this thing. And if you see that, uh, okay, first you actually uh, suppose we are increasing that V in starting from zero to some to some value, and we are just uh, measuring the output voltage from here. So we are plotting output and input. This is called the uh, VI, uh, not VI, that output input characteristic of the of a particular devices. So when V in is zero, this transistor is off. So we will be getting VDD and when it crosses the VTH of this transistor for this transistor, suppose this is a VTH, it will become on and uh, current will be passing from this thing and, uh, and as we are more strongly driving this transistor into saturation, more and more current will pass. So less voltage drop will be here and more will be there. So we are getting a smaller voltage and ultimately we are heading towards this. Now uh, look at this plane, uh, this IDVDS of M1, call it M1. First when the VN is 0, this is cut off and VDS is v VDD, this thing, when it is 0, when it is cut off, VDS means the output is VDD. So this is VDD. So it, it will start from here and it will end and uh, so after VT, after that input signal crosses VTH, it will increase and enter into the saturation zone. And uh, we are increasing V in, it will go like this because as we are increasing the current, more and more voltage will be dropped across it. So less will be available for this thing, this VDS. So VDS will be decreasing. And after some time, it will go into the triode zone. This is our the triode, triode saturation boundary. So it will be entering in the triode zone. And in this zone, this model is no longer valid. This is the model for saturation zone only. So we will be, uh, we'll be happier if we confined our uh, MOS in this zone. So we don't want, it will come here. So, so now compare these two, uh, these two graph. It starts from there. It is here, coming like this. So, so call this point A. So this is the point A. So, and so uh, when we are increasing this uh, input voltage, it will be off here. Up to this zone, M1 is off. Up to from from here to here, M1 will be in saturation. And from here to there, it will be in triode. Okay, and it is it is very easy to uh, determine this point because uh, we know that this saturation voltage is given by for a particular VGS VGS minus VT has to be greater than VDS. I mean this is the condition for keeping the MOS in saturation zone. This is a very important uh, condition, and, and you have to use this again and again when you are designing anything, any any circuit using analog CMOS like that. So this is called the overdrive. So VDS should be greater than overdrive. And this is uh, that, that voltage. This much. So, uh, so if uh, for, for our case, it will the equation turns into VGS means V in VTH greater than V out. So this equation will be looking like this. So when V out is greater than this thing, I mean that V out is greater than this line. For for this for this zone, M1 will be in saturation, and this M1 is trapped. So this is the way of determining uh, when it M1 enters into triode zone from saturation zone. So we will confine our operation here only. Okay. 
and this is known uh, as I have said this is known as overdrive. If we can reduce this overdrive, we will be increasing that our output swing. This is our out, this is the maximum achievable output swing without pushing this device into triode from VDD to this point and this is the input swing we can achieve. So if uh, we can reduce this voltage, I mean this voltage, suppose this is here. So we, we are having a higher output swing, then this curve will shift like this, this one, we are having this much output swing. And the way to increase this overdrive is uh, increasing the W by L of this device, this NMOS. Okay. Actually, if you derive this, uh, the gain, small signal gain will be given by uh, G1 into some R0 parallel RL. G1 is a GM and uh, as you know that G1 is proportional to W by L. So if you increase this W by L, your overdrive will decrease and you are, uh, you are getting more higher uh, output swing. Decrease overdrive, you are getting higher output swing. So this is the case and uh, actually there are two ways of increasing the gain of this thing. We can, uh, we, can, uh, we can increase this GM or rather we can increase RL also. If we are increasing uh, GM, situation is like this. This is our boundary, triode saturation boundary. These are for different voltage, call it uh, VGS2, VGS3, VGS4, VGS5 and this is our load line. So for, uh, for this a particular design, uh, for a particular W by L and RL, we have this much of overdrive. This is our uh, overdrive and this is the swing, output swing we can, we can have and suppose this is our Q point. So we are varying around this, and now we are increasing that we are, we have inc we are increasing W by L. So we are increasing W by L means it uh, its IV characteristic will change. It will be like this one. Is that clear? These dotted lines uh, are the new IV characteristic of a higher W by L transistor, this one. Previously this line was for 5 but now we have it for uh, BJ is equal to 4. Like that this is for 3, this is for 2. And you see that our Q point will shift from this point to here. Because we have, uh, we, ha we, we made our Q point at VGS3, now VGS that the line corresponding to VGS3 has been shifted from up to this point. So though we are having a higher overdrive now uh, and, and also see our overdrive is increased, this one. This is our new overdrive, we can, now we can push the device up to this, this much. So though we can have a higher overdrive means how higher output swing, the effective swing is, is, uh, is getting reduced because our Q point is shifted here. Now the undi maximum undistorted output we can have this, this much only. Previously we are getting much more uh, swing. But now as a shift of Q point, so we have to change our Q point to a new value to get the uh, full output swing. And also see one factor that uh, our input swing is also being reduced. Previously it was from 5 to 2, but now it was, it is uh, 2 to 4. So input swing has gone down, output swing increased, A B increased. And this is and uh, actually uh, this is a simple fact I think but Razavi uh, explained this simple fact in a horrible manner. I don't know why she have done uh, she she has done this thing. Uh, actually, he, what he said that he said increasing gain means output swing will reduce, but that is not the case. The output swing will increase, but due to the shift of the bias point, we are not getting that thing. 
so if we want to get the full output string we have to uh, we have to uh, we have to shift we have to uh, decide a new uh, biasing point or we have to modify our input biasing network so this is the case and uh, and also we can have uh, that I, I told you that uh, we, we can we can also increase the resistance rl to increase the gain in that case the scenario will be like this This is our previous gain, and they can let it be Q, Q point. This is VDD by RL, this point. This is VDD. And if you are increasing that RL, you are, uh, you, uh, we are basically lowering this value. So we will be uh, somewhat like this. This is our VDD by new model. So we are having a higher output swing here. Previously it was there, now it is here, up to this point. But our, uh, but our Q point is already destroyed because it has entered into the saturation zone. This is our new Q point. So we have to change the Q point for this, uh, to, get, to get the benefit of this higher output scene. So uh, the results are same, whatever be the means of you are increasing uh, this gain of the circuits. So to, 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 this is the, complete thing I think. So what drive is done, transfer characteristic is done, movement of operating point on the IDS, VDS plane is also done, this swing and the output resistance. I think output resistance, you can, you, you can measure the output resistance from uh, easily because the formula of uh, the way to measure output that you short the inputs. put a source in the output, measure the current, it is driving and that the ratio of this V0 I0 will give you your R0. And if you are shorting this thing, this will go off because VGS, uh, now VGS is 0. So only you are getting RD and R0 in parallel. So R0 will be this much. Okay. So the basics is over right now. Uh, we are having no much nothing. So is that clear up to this point? Now there are a different type of loads for CS configuration. One is a passive load resistance that I have already discussed. Let's start this. Uh, I'm not sure whether all all of these I can cover or okay. Let us see how much I can do. The diode connect uh, actually that uh, the uh, one more disadvantage of this passive load resistance is that fabrication of that thing because the um, the technology people they do not uh, like to have those RS or they use uh, they they always try to use the reduce the use of R, uh, all the passive components because the making of the passive components takes large area and the tolerances are very poor and al also the uh, and also the variation uh, of these values during due to the variation of process parameters is much higher. So they, they, they normally try to use all, uh, all the active devices devised in such a way that they can act as a load or act as a passive devices. Okay. So uh, RL, uh, so don't, normally we do not use it, though it is a very, uh, very simple concept to understand all those things, so, but normally we do not use this. We use uh, this direct connected load, uh, load resistance, constant current source load, cascoded, all these things are there. And all of this uses active devices as a uh, as a load this thing okay let us start with the new fresh sheet first is a diode connected load diode connected means uh, you have the transistor if we short the drain to gate this is source it is a diode connected load why is diode connected because the now you, you just see the structure n plus n plus this is p get drain we are shorting this and having this as a so only the thing is the diode between these two <coughs> so this diode is so the, uh, this this uh, this configuration is known as uh, diode connected
n mos <coughs> and uh, by doing this we can uh, always we can we can uh, we can guarantee that this device always will be in saturation zone this is how we have the this concept for being in saturation we must satisfy this now we are making vgs equal to vds so vds should be always greater than vgs for this case because i mean this quantity is called overdrive call it overdrive and this vgs is now equal to vds right? so uh, so vds should uh, will be always greater than this this quantity okay so it will be always in the saturation zone it will be like that this is the id vds this is our boundary line this dotted one and it will move along this line here the vgs and vds are same say 2 3 4 these are the vgs so this will be 2 this will be 3 will be 4 so we are getting vgs equal to vds so this is the uh, this is the important i mean uh, device that we are, we, are, we are using this device many a time in our next uh, next classes or in our design courses also okay so this is over so uh, now this the um, the single stage amplifier having diode connected load is like this this is the nmos p in this is our 10 get source it is connected this is also the this is our primary device this is the secondary i mean load to this so this is the dirt connected load to the nmos cs stage and see now see the body connections this is grounded this is also grounded there is no body bias effect for this m1 so vth will be vth0 but for this this won't be the case it has finite body bias effect so vth of this transistor won't be the same so this is the this is actually disadvantage of this using this nmos here so we can use this pmos also instead connect like here p out so this uh, as as i have told that for uh, annual process we can connect the we can short the body and source of pmos so you can short it it is grounded so now here it is there is no body bias effect for this pmos but and and uh, and, and also it, it it is not getting any body bias so uh, we can make vth of this transistor more or less same so it, it is the reason that pmos uh, actually we we prefer pmos in such situation and students are getting scary when using pmos because because it, it is a it is a convention that uh, it is it is told that nmos is there for learning and pmos is there for making making students confused because the uh, because the vds vds all those things having their uh, opposite sign and opposite uh, not uh, opposite sign as that of their nmos so students are getting confused like that but don't be scared with pmos they are also a nice person with their nmos counterpart but remember that the all the equations we have derived for nmos is valid for pmos if we are taking the modulus of the corresponding things so this is this we this we designed for uh, nmos this is for nmos the same equation will be valid for pmos also if we are taking this as you know that for pmos this is negative uh, this this is negative this is also negative this is all of them are negative so if we take the mod i mean modulus just the magnitude of those things and this is for pmos so this is valid for all uh, even the id id vgs or id vds the equations are also valid for uh, nmos we have derived those are also valid for pmos but we have to take the corresponding magnitudes only okay So let us do a little bit on uh, this 
PMOS PMOS uh, device or PMOS direct connected load. In. Now we draw the transfer characteristic. We we will getting something like this. V O V in. And now look into the movement of their operating point on the ID VDS plane for both of the transistors. This is for M1. This is for M2. VDS1. As I have said that M2 will be always in the saturation zone. This is our boundary. So M2 will be here only. If we increase from some uh, zero voltage to this thing, this higher voltage, so it will be start from here and go along this line. So this value, it, it actually basically starts from VGS equal to VTH, move along this line. But for M1, it will be like this. So it will be entering here at that point in the triad zone. So up to this point, M1 is off. This is a VTH. This is our line, that line, that VGS minus VTH is less than VDS. Put this is V in and this is V out. So this line we are getting. So M1 will be in So the, and this is a this is our overdrive voltage minimum overdrive voltage we are getting or the minimum output voltage we are getting so this is our output swing this much actually this this won't be the VDD uh, we, we, we won't get VDD here we, we will be getting VDD minus VTH this uh, this uh, highest voltage because when it is uh, when it is off this transistor this is VDD. So one VTH will drop here, and we'll get only VDD, uh, VDD minus VTH. So this is the highest point we can get, not the VDD. This is one disadvantage of this uh, this thing. Okay. Mm. And if you, if you can, uh, if you want to derive the small signal voltage gain of this thing, we will have small signal model will look like this. This is V in, get one, drain one, source one. This is ground shorted. This is source two, get two, D two. This is the R two. R two means output resistance of the same two transistor. This is Z one, uh, R one. G two, call it VGS. This this voltage is will, will be here. I mean, difference between these two. Call it VG2, G2, VG2, and it will be G, G1, V in. See uh, that G, GMB term is, is not there because the body effect is absent for this device as well as this device. And if you uh, derive this small signal gain, it will be like this G1 by G2. And the output resistance, as I have said, and we are taking output from here. This is our VO. And output resistance, if you uh, derive it, it will be looking like 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 G2. Okay. So this uh, and and here also you see that we can increase the gain by increasing G1. That means uh, increasing the W by L of this M1 transistor. And all all the effects we have discussed uh, in the previously for RL. Will be, will be valid for here also. So increasing gain means we are increasing the output swing, effective output swing 
for that uh, but for getting that effective output sync we have to redesign our inputs uh, input biasing network to have a new q point new vgs q point and if you derive the equation for this nmos kind of thing other uh, that is the nmos load nmos direct connected loads av will be like this one gm will be there you just compare these two here we have here we have av uh, g1 by g2 yeah g1 by g2 plus this thing this culprit has gone because uh, because this is suffering from body effect this transistor so gmb of this transistor will be there gmb2 i call it so the gain of this uh, this one is less than the gain of that one pmos av pmos okay so, and the culprit is this body effect so th this is the reason we, we we always try to reduce the body effect and uh, whenever you can uh, it is good so these are over now one more important uh, thing is there so uh, this two this this two are over this is the next thing we will be discussing constant current source load well the constant current source load means uh, we are putting a source this is a constant current source this is our m1 but uh, as you may be aware of that there is no uh, real constant current source that cannot be so we, we have to use a uh, we have to use something here which is not an ideal constant current source but a real one and how to make a real current source that i will be discussing in the next class that uh, that on current mirror using a current mirror technique we can use uh, current sources now suppose this is the ideal one this is a uh, ideal constant current source uh, ideal constant current source means it will it will maintain a constant current irrespective of the voltage across it and ideal voltage source is it will maintain the constant voltage across it irrespective of the current through it so this is the case now look at uh, iv characteristic of this this stuff suppose this is i2 so it will force a current of i2 through this transistor and it will try to keep it fixed this is our vgsq so what you will get basically it is uh, we are taking output we have basically infinite gain because without without varying the input without varying the vgs we can have this swing output swing so this is not practically possible actually the uh, actually it uh, this thing uh, this this flatness is not there uh, as we, we we know that it will be like this one due to the short channel effects due to the lambda this slope is proportional to the lambda so i will draw redraw it here this will be like in the, like this this is about that uh, i2 pgsq p1 p2 so this is the output swing you are getting and this is the input swing you are varying with this and you are getting this one so we need a finite input to get a finite output here actually the case was that we we, we basically don't uh, we don't need any input to get this variation this vds variation so this is a very ideal case we we uh, we don't have this ultimate flat curves here so we we, we always have some finite slope in the saturation zone and uh, this is the case okay and actually i have drawn this as a horizontal line this one this may not look as a horizontal this is a horizontal line constant current source ideal constant current source now suppose this source is not a constant uh, i mean that uh, not a ideal so it will have some finite resistance with it call it rp okay so then this line won't be a horizontal one it will uh, it will have some uh, slope which is inversely proportional to the rp it will have some slope then then the situation is still good we have this much of uh, this much this is input variation this is the output variation so the gain is here is highest almost infinite this is the ideal case just textbook kind of thing gain is here 
is slightly less than this but, uh, but greater than this and it has the least gain. This is the case for all are ideal, M1 is ideal, our source is also ideal and this is the case for only the source is ideal but M1 is real and this is the case for both are real. So this is our actual uh, situation and we are getting uh, gain which is much less than obviously much less than infinite and also less than this one. So this is the uh, scenario of when you using when we are using a constant current source load uh, as a load to the input device. So this thing are there. And normally we, 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 we will use what that for constant current source. This is M2, this is M1. So this is uh, this is our real CS, I mean constant current source, CCS, call it CCS, constant current source. And we have to, and, and if we if we want to get a constant current source behavior, we have to uh, we have to fix this thing, this BB in such a way that it will operate. M2 will operate all, uh, only in this zone, saturation zone, because only in in that zone it will keep the current through it fixed. Okay. Now look at this. Uh, the transfer characteristic will be like this. Same V out, V out versus V in. This is the VTH and this will be the line uh, for M1, M1 in set, M1 in triode and now we have to derive the condition for which it, this M2 will be in saturation zone. So M2 will be in the M2 is the PMOS here, this is VDD. So what we have for NMOS, VTA, VGS minus VTH less than this, this one. Now as I have told that VG, uh, this equation is also valid for PMOS if we are taking the uh, corresponding magnitude only. Now here VV should be less than VDD. So taking, taking the, taking the uh, this magnitude means this VDD minus VV, this one, actually, actually VGS for PMOS will be, will be this one. But this is a negative one. So we are we are we are just uh, swapping this here and that here to get the magnitude of this thing. This is the magnitude of VTHP, and uh, the output is and VDS is actual VDS will be V out minus VDD, but we'll reverse the order and we have <coughs> this one. So this and that will get cancelled. Suppose this is the line, this is the point of VV plus VTH. <coughs> so, uh, so when the output is uh, greater than this quantity, M2 will be in set. This for M2, M2 will be in set. So, M2 will be in, sorry, uh, uh, output is less than this quantity, M2 will be in set. Okay, now now see the uh, this common uh, common saturation zone. We want all the devices should be operating in the common zone uh, in the in the saturation zone. So this is the portion from here to here that will have M2 in saturation as as well as M1 is all saturation. So this is our swing, the output undistorted output swing we can get. This is the corresponding input swing. Okay. <coughs> So these are can these are things you can do, or uh, and and also you can you can derive the small signal gain and uh, draw the small signal equivalent circuit and derive the gain and output resistance all those things. Let me check whether I have the expression for it. <coughs> okay, I think I'm not there. I'm not in this. Um, okay, you, you can do these things in uh, in home, at your home. 
so this is the case for this is uh, this uh, this is also over the constant current source load now this is the cascaded common source this is the most important uh, topology that that has that, that is being used in analog analog uh, cmos design cascode means basically we are driving a common gate with a common source this is a common source is a vn so th this is a common source stage but this is a common gate so e so basically we are driving the common gate with a common source load i mean common source uh, transistor so this is this topology is known as the cascaded uh, kind of thing and the uh, advantage of this uh, is that if you derive the small signal uh, equivalent model and it will look like this one this is the this is your rl <coughs> r2 it is better to pull this this here this is the g2 terminal because the ac equivalent uh, this is a dc voltage so the ac in ac equivalent circuit this will be grounded so g2 is grounded G1 and this is the D1. D1. This will be D1 and this is the S1. It's grounded. So this will be G1 V in, and uh, we are taking out. This is output. So suppose this this voltage is V, some V voltage is there. So it will be G2 V minus of G2 V. Actually, there should be one more uh, one more term is there that uh, due due to the body effect of this transistor because this will having the body effect. We are we are uh, grounding the body terminal. So, but typically for uh, because it will more complicate your uh, I mean calculation. So we will neglect this thing, and we just have this relations. And if you derive the AV, AV will come like. so it will be a huge equation but if you uh, use some approximations that r2 and r1 is much much higher than g1 and g2 you will be getting like this one g1 into rl so g1 into rl this rl and uh, and the output transistor output resistance is uh, is much higher you are getting it will be something like this g2 R two, R one. So actually, the effect of this uh, effectively it increases the output resistance of this topology because if you are seeing uh, from from this uh, from this port, suppose we are uh, you are trying to derive the output resistance means you have to short this one and you have to replace this with a voltage source V zero. So you are looking to this uh, circuit from the output port and you are having a much higher resistance of R uh, one and R two. i mean it, it it is basically addition uh, uh, um, multiplication of r1 r2 and g2 so the output resistance of this cascaded uh, structure is much higher than a stand alone m1 or m2 this one so this is the added advantage of this uh, cascaded topology and uh, let me just check uh, this one for this also you, you you can you can derive this uh, you can derive the transfer characteristics and you you can, you can de define uh, various zone uh, of uh, this m1 and m2 will be in triode or saturation and you and but whatever be the case you will be finding some zone some uh, some zone where m1 and m2 will be in sat and that zone will show the steepest slope this is the this is the this is the general uh, observation that the slope of the transfer characteristic is this, is the highest for that zone where uh, both all the devices are in saturation i mean all the output devices are in saturation 
So here also you can derive that zone and do the calculation. So, so now the last topology is uh, this thing is folded cascode one. Uh, uh, oh, uh, one disadvantage of this this thing, this cascode eight, is that suppose we are we, we are increases the cascode device. We have increasing uh, this thing. This is V in, V V one. Call it V V two. This is V out. Now you see that the uh, uh, so our the transfer characteristic will be shifting like this one. So the minimum voltage we can achieve is 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 getting increased. I mean this is the case only one cascoded device. This is the case we have two cascoded device. So this swing is getting reduced. This is the swing for uh, two cascoded device. This is the swing for one cascoded device. So the swing is getting reduced. So this is one disadvantage of this cascoding, uh, cascoded structure. And to avoid uh, or, or to bypass this disadvantage, we have the folded cascode topology. Here, the we just what we do is that actually, as as I have said, that there is no passive RL is there. So we use normally we use a constant current source load for cascoding also. This is VV. This is our uh, this is our constant current source, M3, M2, V in M1. So in folded cascos, what do you do? We just uh, we just rotate this transistor. Both of the are in MOS. So we just rotate this transistor in this way, and we'll be having such structure. This is VV1. We have this is uh, M1, M2, M3. Taking output from here, giving the input here. NMOS, PMOS, NMOS. Now, uh, well, uh, we we cannot put NMOS here because you see the di direction of current flow. Normally, we always try to put. Uh, actually, this current is flowing from. The, in this direction, and this is also flowing in this direction, so there will be conflict. So we 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 we, uh, we normally don't put NMOS here. We put uh, PMOS there instead of NMOS. So our input device is PMOS, and uh, out uh, this thing are NMOS. So and uh, to flow, I mean to bias all this device, we should have a constant current source here. So the current will flow this this direction. Actually, the advantage of this this thing is that, as as you know, that uh, to achieve lower power, we are reducing VDD. Constantly, we are pushing towards lower VDD. Uh, previously, we are uh, we are working with 10 volt, 12 volt supply. Now, it is uh, 1.8 volt. So, as the VDD is uh, decreasing, so this swing, say it is VDD to so, to some overdrive voltage is there. So, this swing also is getting reduced. So if we uh, if we cascode more and more devices here to get higher output resistance, the scenario will become more worse. So we are getting still lower and lower this output thing. So to uh, so to bypass this uh, this scenario, we we have this structure actually. Actually, you will be having some ports on uh, op amp or def amp also. Def amp I will be taking. So in 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 a different this is this is just application of cascode. In in a def amp, this is a normal application uh, normal or uh, a generic circuit output. Both of the gate are tied to a single voltage. This is V, and this is the our differential input. So you see that the output, the maximum of V out, is limited by the overdrive of this these two transistors. Actually, this uh, this have to be replaced with these transistors, this constant current sources, and these also. So the output, uh, this output voltage maximum it can achieve is the uh, that is limited by the overdrive of this thing, and uh, the the minimum it can achieve is limited by the overdrive of this, this, and this. So three uh, NMOS are coming in series to limit this thing. So we we will use cascode here. Uh, we will just bypass this signal or this uh, input devices.
so uh, this is our VB. This is the input, differential input. And now see if we are taking the V out from here, our output uh, maximum output value we can achieve is still limited by the overdrive of these two transistors. But the minimum value we can achieve is limited by only two transistors, overdrive of two, these two. So the swing we are getting here is much uh, at least one overdrive voltage higher than this. And one overdrive voltage is normally it, it, it is in the 2, 2.4 volt. And see, uh, and suppose you are working on one volt. So getting an advantage or swing, increasing swing is 0.2 to 0.4 volt is a huge one. So we'll be using this cascoded to, uh, topology for such cases where the overdrive voltage is limiting our output swing. Now, I think this is, you know, the CS with uh, source degeneration. The source is degenerated with a resistance. So not much here it is there. Uh, I think I have covered all these things. Okay. This is. So see you after a break.